พลางคำมาสูตรคำสอน4ข้อที่ชัดเจนและไม่เปลี่ยนแปลงในเรื่องความบริสุทธิ์ละเว้นจากการลักขโมยและกล่าวเท็จตอนที่5ของ7ตอนในระหว่างอาจารย์และลูกศิษย์ให้ไว้ในภาษาอังกฤษเมื่อวันที่23ธันวาคมคิศกราช2018นิวแลนด์ไต้หวันที่รู้จักกันว่าฟอร์โมซาเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใดเพราะเหตุใด
the Pataya Buddha vehicle or all the various levels of bodhisattvahood up to and including the ten grounds in order to be revered by others and because they are greedy for offering. Buddha said perhaps all this reason that some people claim that they have become Pataya Buddha or they have become such and such bodhisattva or just one time only return and never come back again, etc., etc., at different levels. And they want offering from the people, greedy offering. Because some believers, they offer anything. So that's all the reason the Buddha suspects why somebody proclaimed that they have attained this and that when they have not, okay? Now the Buddha continues, these Ichantikas, meaning the great liars, Ichantika is a Sanskrit term for such kind of people who lie about enlightenment and their saintly status. That's Ichantikas, yeah? Not normal liars, these are Ichantika, I mean greatest liar, the worst liar, yeah. These Ichantikas destroy the seeds of Buddhahood just as surely as a taller tree is destroyed if it is chopped down. A taller tree or any tree, okay? If you chop down a tree, it's chopped down, right? No more chance to live. Similarly, these Ichantikas, I mean the greatest liar people, cut down their seat of future enlightenment, of Buddhahood, like a tree being chopped down. This is so bad when you lie about your achievement in spiritual practice. should never do that. If you lie about something else, mundane way, or because of uh, any necessity, good excuses, maybe still can be redeemed. You can still be helped and saved and become Buddha, but if you lie as a Ichantikas, then you finished. You can never be anywhere near Buddhahood. You cut off your seat of enlightenment, of Buddhahood. So you'll be recycling yourself as ghosts and demons and the most is, you know, low divas in the low heaven or Ashura, okay? Have power, have retinues, have followers, have some magical power and all that, but you will never become a Buddha. So beware of that. Buddha continued, I command the bodhisattvas and ahabs to appear after my extinction in response bodies in the Dhamma ending age. Response body is similar to the uh, light body. Transformation body, light body. You know, not the real physical body, but the appearance of the body in light. So the Buddha appealed to the Buddha, Bodhisattva and the Ahats in the future, use their transformation body uh, in the Dharma ending age, when the Buddha uh, has gone to the Nirvana a long time, maybe three, five hundred years after, and to take various forms in order to rescue those in the cycle of rebirth. Yeah, because Ananda has asked how he can help. So the Buddha keeps saying all this method. And he even appealed to all the uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to help on the sentient beings after he's gone. They should either become shramanas, white robed lay disciples, kings, ministers or officials, virgin youths or maidens, and so forth. Remember, he said, appear in various forms, use a transformation body to appear as if you are king, queen, etc. So some kings and queens are not maybe not real physical king and queen, but the manifestation of the bodies, if they are benevolent and kind, then maybe they are a bodhisattva manifestation. Okay. And so forth. And even prostitutes, widows, profligates, thieves, butchers, or dealers in contraband, 
doing the same things as these kinds of people. Why? They praise the Buddha vehicle and cause them to enter somebody in body and mind. So the Buddha appeal, request all the future monks, nuns, bodhisattva, saints to please use their power of transformation to appear in different field of life, in different jobs, in different positions, even as prostitutes, as butchers, to doing the same job with them. Appear like a prostitute with the prostitutes people, and therefore mingling with them, and then slowly teach them, inspire them to know the Buddha teaching, the saintly teaching. So how much sacrifice any Buddha or Bodhisattva has to undergo, nobody would know. Even become prostitute, even become butcher. Though these are even against the precept. But you, as Bodhisattva, must do it, so that you can befriend these kind of people. They are very difficult for any prostitutes or butchers to understand anything about Dharma, about true teaching. So you even have to appear to be like them and then bring them into the true path. So we should never look down upon anyone in any position, any job, however lowly or however despicable in our opinion. We should always have respect because they have Buddha nature inside anyway, hmm? okay? One time I recite a poem about an uh, artisan, you know, artisan or a prostitute, how sad she was when her so-called client left her in the middle of the night. She begged him to stay, and he did not. And one of uh, your brothers criticized me, saying, Master, that's a prostitute poem that you recite. And I say, she is a Buddha too. And at that time, I really meant it, and I really understood it. I don't just say that, but I really know it. Many things, just like when you understand it, but you cannot explain it to others. Yeah, yeah, because you just enlightened at that moment for that thing, that subject, that object alone, yeah? One time I read one sentence in some of the Zen book, you know, meditation book, Zen book somewhere. It say like this in Chinese, okay? I repeat Chinese first so that I can remember in English. Uh, meaning I am enlightened all by myself. No one is my master. I really understood that sentence, deeply understood, knowingly, and know it so well, clearly, to me. So, oh, I feel very good. I taught the disciples in Taiwan at that time. I said, you repeat all this. Is this true? Is it true? I even forget that I'm their master. If I told them to, to repeat like that, how would they even respect me anymore? I did not care because I understood the true meaning of it. So I taught all of them at that time, repeat after me. <laughs> I alone enlighten myself. No one is my master. Repeat it. And every day we do that. Uh, okay. Uh, and one of my so-called non-resident disciple. And she went to America to give initiation to some people in America. And I told her, you have to tell them also after initiation to repeat this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the nun did. And they revolt against her. <laughs> they say, she's arrogant. <laughs> and she teaches against my teaching. It's not true. I is the one who told her to say that. Because I realized the, really the meaning of it. And later I say, okay, don't, don't say that no more, because, <laughs> because I realize that it's only me who understood it. And they understand nothing. <laughs> so I realize that enlightenment, you can't pass on, okay? And you, you always enlighten in some, in some subject after another, but not all the time and not in all subject. But when you understand one thing, that is yours. And only yours, 
Yes. And other people might not be able to grasp it because it's not the words. It's, it's your realization. It's your enlightenment in it. My God, I thought everybody would understand it. I tell them, go teach them. Teach everyone. I myself do it. The same. Yes. It's, it's the rest of the answer to what you asked me earlier about why I was crying yesterday. Because you and didn't it's, realize something. Yeah. It's related to what you're saying now. Mm. Um, Master, that to be honest, many times I I struggled to know about you or not. And I always had what I called an internal master, which mm. was a voice that guided me and still told me to listen to you and mm. still told me to trust you and still mm. told me to come here mm. and to follow you. Mm. And I cried yesterday at a moment when they were the same voice at the same time. Yeah. Um, when your voice and my internal master were at the same time speaking, the same voice ah. was one of the moments that I cried. Very good. Um, and what you just said reminded me of, of that. And mm. so I wanted to finish answering your question from before. Very good. <laughs> okay, I was just concerned about you. Okay? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, all right. That may be something I said that uh, trigger you or some sadness in you. Okay? That, that you might feel guilty about something. Okay, that's all. Okay, good, good that you know, good that you know. Yeah, it's like that. Whatever we know, we just know. We can't explain it to somebody else because it's such a simple sentence. Yeah? I enlighten myself alone. Nobody is my master. And I really know that, what it means. And then I teach everybody because I was so happy this is the truth. <laughs> and nobody understand nada. <laughs> and I told my nun to tell the new disciple in America that revolt against her. They wrote a letter to me saying, that nun is very bad. She, she, she told us that you are not our master. <laughs> 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 that we alone are our own master. Nobody is master. That means she disregards you. I said, no, no, I told her to tell you. <laughs> God. It was a very funny, funny, uh, years ago, you know, decades ago. But this is like that. And later I realized my, my dumb height, you know, meaning <laughs> my, <laughs> my stupidity. <laughs> So I tell them, stop it, stop it. They don't understand, so forget that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Just like in some of the Zen, uh, Zen story, uh, one of the master, you know, uh, yelled very loud into one of his disciples' ears, and then he was dead for three days. <laughs> but then, after he regained his ear sight again, he come and, and cried to his master, complaining, said, I don't hear that no more. Understand? When he was deaf, he heard the inside voice, inside music. And when he regained his ear sight again, it's usual he tried to listen outside, and then he won't get it no more. <laughs> yeah, similar like that. But don't ask me to yell at you, it's different, okay? <laughs> That master and that disciple is a different situation. Just like I say, I'm alone and enlightened, and no one is my master, you know? And I understand that completely, but I don't know how to explain it to you, okay? Okay, now, continue. Before the calendar ends. <laughs> so the Buddha even uh, encouraged, required, request of the monks same people in the future. After the Buddha went to Nirvana, he said, you do this, do that, do anything you can to awaken other beings, to lead them into the true path, to be even prostitutes. But hmm? imagine, huh? you are saint, enlightened, knowing, and you have to use your power to manifest yourself as a real like a physical prostitute, as a real physical butcher, in order to befriend these people who are supposed to be in a lowly spiritual level, who has no chance to know any master because of their position, okay, and their background, and their companies, and their job. Very difficult for them to understand anything. So you, the saint, have to use your spiritual power to be like them in order to teach them the right way of life, the right way of life. Even Jesus, 
say he forgave the prostitute, meaning he probably gave her initiation, and even his disciple roar at him, hmm? criticize him. Give her initiation, and then people, his disciple, criticize him. So only enlightened master are non-judgmental, okay? Uh, so tolerant, so loving, and so kind. I made some offering, a substantial sum offering to a temple in Europe because I knew the old abbot. He's gone now. He's gone now. The new one coming. The old abbot was an ascetic monk, very good monk. He's mostly skinny, and very funny, very funny. He went to my house sometimes, stay in my house, also, of course, with other disciples. And he and other monks are very much respectful of me and loving me very much. So I still remember that temple, and I gave some donation to repair the temple and all that. I have reverence and love for the old monk, the former abbot. Sadly, he is gone. <laughs> 